<laughs> Hello and welcome to Veterans Metals Workshop. I'm your host Frank Foster and today we have a great show on the shoulder sleeve insignia and distinctive unit crest of all of the units that served with the 4th Infantry Division during the Vietnam War from 1966 to 1970. And we'll take a look at the infantry, armor, artillery, support command, and aviation battalion unit crest, as well as the evolution of the 4th Infantry Division shoulder sleeve insignia. I think you're going to find this very interesting. Special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain in South Carolina for providing everything you're going to see. And if you enjoy these, please give us a like. Even better, subscribe. It'll keep us on the air. So uh, today, the 4th Infantry Division insignia for wear on the uniform is, well, with a gray background. There's also a subdued variation. And then on the blue uniform as a combat insignia, is the new combat identification device. So that's just to tell you where we are today. Let's go and take a look at what it was like in 1966 to 1970 with the 4th Infantry Division in Vietnam. Okay, let's go. The 4th Infantry Division, also known as the Ivy Division, is one of America's most famous infantry divisions and it traces its lineage back to World War I. The division also had an incredible record during World War II. But today, today we want to talk about the service of the 4th Infantry Division and its particular units in Vietnam. The 4th Infantry Division served a total of over 1,534 days in Vietnam. The 4th Infantry Division deployed from Fort Lewis to Camp Inari in Pleiku, Vietnam on 25 September 1966 and served over four years before returning to Fort Carson, Colorado on 8 December 1970. It operated in the Central Highlands in Tainan Province but mainly around play coup, but it did a lot of heavy fighting up in Dok Tho with the 173rd Airborne, and then it came back to An Khe, and it participated in the Cambodian incursion with the Army of the Republic of Vietnam. But today what we want to talk about is the shoulder sleeve insignia of the 4th Infantry Division that all the members of the division wore on their left sleeve while they served there, and their unit crest, and I'm showing in the upper right here, the division unit crest, steadfast and loyal. Now, once a member departed the division, he could wear the 4th Infantry Division patch as his combat patch on the right sleeve. The 4th Infantry Division patch has an interesting evolution over the last 100 years. On your left is the example used during World War I, and the four ivy leaves indicate the number of a division and the pronunciation of ivy, IV, indicating the Roman numeral for the designation. Uh, the example is a hand sewn on a pink flannel background, probably on an officer's uniform. The number two example is, well, how it was done around the 1920s. There was a lot of flexibility, and you can see it's a round background. During the transition years between the wars, uh, example number three, there were some different ways of doing the leaves, as shown here. And then number four is the design from the period of 1920-1938, when many designs and fabrics were employed. Uh, the example number five is from 1938 through World War II, and it's a standard design with the leaves pointed to the corners. Uh, also around 1938 uh, to 1958, officer uniforms were the classic pinks and greens. And the example of number six is uh, hand sewn on a fabric to match the fabrics used in an officer's coat. The next example, number seven, is from the 1960s when the uniforms had changed and the 4th Infantry Division had become a mechanized division. The background of the patch was changed to a light gray and the edges was henceforth to be marrowed. Uh, and number eight is an interesting example with the advent of the Vietnam War. Many personnel chose to wear their patches on the pocket hangers since the weather in Southeast Asia demanded only summer weight khakis and many times wearing the patches on the sleeves, uh, well, it just didn't work. Uh, shown here is a locally made patch with a plastic hanger. Number nine, in 1963, the Army decided only dark subdued patches would be worn on the uniform. And then number 10 is the official subdued patch, 100% uh, embroidered. 
And then number 11, in Vietnam, it was not unusual for many subunits, such as a long-range reconnaissance patrol, to have patches made locally. Uh, it was a good thing for morale, and many of the unit commanders let people wear them. Uh, and number 12 is interesting because today at Fort Carson, this is an example of a morale booster. On occasion, a unit or the division will be selected by the commander to be a unit of choice, and the members are permitted to wear this patch on the duty uniform. The 4th Infantry Division distinctive unit insignia is a gold color metal and enamel device, one inch tall, and it consists of an ivy league of green outlined in gold above a scroll with the inscription steadfast and loyal. The ivy leaf is taken from the 4th Infantry Division shoulder sleeve insignia, and the motto is associated with the division. And that brings us to the nine different infantry battalions that were assigned to the 4th Infantry Division during its time in Vietnam. Let's take a look. And on your left is the distinctive unit insignia of the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Battalion of the 8th Infantry Regiment. Ha! <laughs> the DUI is really rich with symbolism. The shield is silver with a blue bend, the infantry colors. And the three heraldic flowers on the bend are symbolic of, well, first the rose, a flower of the state of New York, where the regimental headquarters was first organized. The second is the flower of the Philippines, where the regiment saw service during the insurrection. And the third flower, the temple flower, which is the flower of Cuba, where the eighth served during the war with Spain. The arrow and the tomahawk represent the Indian campaigns in which the regiment participated. And the claw represents the main strength of the Prussian Eagle, alluding to the regiment's part in the occupation of Germany after World War I. Ha! <laughs> Pretty cool. Next is a unit crest of a 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Battalion of the 12th Infantry Regiment. And this crest reflects the fighting during the Civil War where the regiment lost almost 50% in the Battle of Gaines Mill. And it also has a wigwam with its five poles to show that it had five Indian campaigns in which the regiment took part. And the top part uh, reflects the Spanish and Philippine Wars with red and yellow being the colors of Spain. And the embattled position for the line is the capture of the blockhouse at El Carney. And the sea lion is from the arms of the Philippine Islands. The 1st Battalion of 14th Infantry Regiment has a unique crest. It's a gold metal enamel device consisting of a gold imperial Chinese dragon placed against a red conventional Spanish castle with the motto to the right of a line. Imperial dragon, which by the way you can tell because it has five toes, reflects service in the China Relief Expedition and the castle reflects service in the liberation of the Philippines during the Spanish-American War. The crest of the 2nd and 3rd Battalion of a 22nd Infantry Regiment is a shield that is white and blue, the old and present infantry colors. The embattled petition line is for the wars in which the regiment has taken place. The arrows stand for five Indian campaigns, and the sun symbol stands for a captured device during the Philippine insurrection. The crest of the 1st and 2nd Battalion of the 35th Infantry Regiment is unique because it reflects the fact that it was organized originally from the 11th, 18th, and 22nd Infantry, and symbols from each one of those units is in the upper left-hand corner, like the, well, the badge of the White Maltese Cross, and the 18th Infantry had a red acorn as a badge, and so on. The cactus represents the original service of the 35th Infantry on the Mexican border. Very nice example of a member of the 4th Infantry Division who served as, a, at least part-time, as a tunnel rat, as you can see from his picture. <laughs> I like the way he carries that pistol. But he's got a beautiful display of his bronze star and his other awards, as well as a couple of commemorative medals to flesh out his case. A really nice presentation. Here's another nice example of a 4th Infantry Division buck sergeant. Maybe he went through the shake and bake program, who knows. But he's, uh, I think what's really interesting is he's used commemorative medals to reflect his presidential unit citation, his meritorious unit citation, and his Vietnamese gallantry cross unit citation. Oh, hey, look up there by the uh, crest in the center, he's put his distinctive unit insignia. The 4th Infantry Division had two armor battalions and one cav squadron. And the first of those, starting at the top, 
was the second of a 34th armor, which is the blue shield with the raised arm. And the shield that the arm is holding up has seven rivets in it, three in the upper portion and four in the lower portion, which of course indicate 34. Symbolism, of course, is that the shield represents an armored protective device and the arm is uh, raised in an attitude of striking. Middle crest is that of a first of a 69th armor, and it's pretty cool. The shield is in the green and white silver of the armor forces. The panther is symbolic of a tremendous power and the striking ability of the regiment. Being always alert, the black variation of the panther is considered the most dangerous of all the panther family. The motto translates to speed and power. Can't miss the crest of the 1st Squadron 10th Cavalry Regiment. It's black and gold, which has long been the regimental colors. The buffalo has likewise been the emblem of the regiment for many years, having its origin in the term buffalo soldiers, applied by the Indians to with colored regiments. The distinctive unit insignia is worn in pairs. Here's a very nice example of a soldier from the 1st Squadron of the 10th Cavalry Regiment showing his awards for service in Vietnam. And you'll notice that he uses his 4th Infantry Division shoulder sleeve insignia as a focal point. And he also uses commemorative medals to represent his award of a meritorious uh, unit citation and the Republic of Vietnam unit citation. And that brings us to the king of battle, the field artillery. And starting on your left is the 2nd Battalion of a 9th Field Artillery. The shield is in artillery red, and in the upper left-hand corner is a symbol for grape shot, which reflects the fact that the 9th came from the 1st Field Artillery. And the famous remark by General Taylor to the battery commander during the Battle of Buena Vista, a little more grape, please, Captain Bragg. The place of origin in the first station of the 9th was Hawaii, and that is reflected by the two Hawaiian symbols of the white balls on a pole, which were placed on either side of the gateway to the King of Hawaii's quarters. The next crest is really unique, the 5th Battalion of the 16th Field Artillery Regiment, and if you're alert, you'll even spot the ivy leaf on the horse's head. But the uh, field is red for artillery. The up and down black marks represent the different hills and mountains where the unit is served, all the way back to Kings Mountain, North Carolina. The three stars are for major operations in World War I, and the horse's head indicate that at one time it came from a mounted regiment. And of course, the ivy leaf is taken from the 4th Infantry Division shoulder sleeve insignia. The Latin motto translates to, go forth with new strength. The center crest is the 6th Battalion of the 29th Field Artillery, and scarlet is the color of artillery, and the functions of the organization are represented by the two shells placed on either side of a sunflower, which represents the state where, well, where the regiment was activated, Kansas. Oh, and the motto is faithful and true. The crest of the 4th Battalion, 42nd Field Artillery Regiment is unique. It's a gold-colored metal and enamel device, the background color being traditional artillery red. There are four shells, two in the upper corner, two in the lower corner, and two diagonal bands running across the shield. So, if you look at the four shells and the two bands, it's the 42nd Field Artillery Regiment. And the, uh, <laughs> the Latin... It translates to make haste slowly. Not exactly sure that the next crest is correct. The 2nd Battalion of a 77th Field Artillery. It's the crest that I have, and I think it's unique because you can too, well, you can see the two uh, sort of medieval sling blades up there for we mow the opposition is the way you would mow grain. But there's also another crest, and I'll show it here now. Uh, it is currently on the Institute of Heraldry's uh, site. And so I'm not sure which one is which, but they're both pretty cool. Know the answer, please let me know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget the 4th Aviation Battalion. And its crest is ultramarine blue, traditionally associated with aviation unit. And in the center is the peak of Mount Rainier, covered in snow with clouds behind it, and above which are a set of golden wings. And the motto translates to eternal vigilance. This specialist fifth class, the helicopter crew chief, has a nice display case with his military awards and the use of some commemorative medals to represent unit awards.
Look at some of his support units in the 4th Infantry Division as the 4th Engineer Battalion is the first one on your left. The scarlet and white are colors of the Corps of Engineers, and the wavy lines refer to outstanding feats accomplished by the unit in World War I. In the upper left-hand corner is a symbol that the badge of engineers and pontooniers of the Civil War use. Uh, yeah, I've never used pontooniers before, but that's a brand new word for you. Next in the center is the crest for the 704th Maintenance Battalion. And what a neat crest. Blacksmith for the Iron Horse with an anvil in the center. And a horseshoe. Ha! <laughs> you gotta hand it to that maintenance battalion designer. And this very neat patch for the 4th Medical Battalion. Lifesaver Express for the Iron Horseman. <laughs> it says it all. And then before all the signalmen jump all over me, here's a nice display for a member of the 121st Signal Battalion. And of course their crest is a orange and white, which are the colors of the Signal Corps. And the functions of the organization are symbolized by a strong right hand grasping electrical flashes indicating speed. And the numerical designation is indicated by the four sides of the square. Looks like this Signal Corps officer likes to use a grenade launcher. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our show on the 4th Infantry Division. Shoulder sleeve and safety and distinctive unit crest for all of the units. Infantry, armor, artillery, aviation, and support that served with the 4th Infantry Division during the Vietnam War. So if you did, please give us a like. Even better, subscribe. Until then, see you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop. If you want to see more Army patches and unit crests, check out our video at Veterans Medals Workshop on the U.S. Military Patch Guide Review.